A second World War Wellington bomber took to the skies again this afternoon. Well, in a manner of speaking, the tail section of the aircraft was hoisted into position at its new home in the Midlands. Yeah, it's got a few holes in it, but uh, this is just one of hundreds of items being handed over by a retiring RAF collector. Andy Bevan watched them all arrive. It was a perfect landing for this pilot, even though he wasn't at the controls. He and dozens of other wartime artefacts have just completed their journey from a private military museum in Gloucestershire to the Stratford Armouries in Warwickshire. Also being rehomed, aircraft engines like the Bristol Hercules and the Armstrong Sidley Cheetah. And, hidden in there somewhere, the tail section of a Wellington bomber. Looking on, their previous custodian, 87-year-old Jerry Tyak, who built up the collection over 20 years. He admits it's time to take things easier now, but it's still hard to let go. It'll be uh, when I walk through the museum in the morning and there's nothing there that I shall feel the loss. How was it seeing it all come out the door? Uh, quite exciting, really, to see, see the Wellington flying again, <laughs> or the tail, anyway. The Stratford Armouries, on the site of a World War II airstrip, are the perfect place for Jerry's items. They'll have some strange bedfellows, though, like this life-sized armoured elephant, as well as cannons dating back to 1750, and even a crossbow designed by Leonardo da Vinci. But the pièce de résistance, for today at least, is the Wellington, flying once again, even if it is courtesy of a crane. It's the only privately owned one of its type still surviving. A painting of it being built is also among the items now in the care of staff at the armories. We're here to sort of preserve what we've got left of these, um, these artefacts and uh, we're on a World War II air site, airfield anyway, so the, the synergy is fantastic and we're here to tell the stories of people that are still alive and we want to sort of capture that before anything happens to them or you know, future, from future generations as well. There's actually so much stuff here that they haven't yet decided where it's all going to go, but when they do, it'll form part of a World War II exhibition. Already in position, though, another of Jerry Tyack's prized possessions, the time when Monty met Maxwell, that's media mogul the late Robert Maxwell, medals and all. Uh, I was um, uh, an admirer of Montgomery um, in his day, and still am. Um, and uh, I heard that uh, Maxwell's effects were being sold at his home at Headington, which is quite close to Morton in Marsh, and obtained the catalogue for the items and the, um, the uh, medals and the photographs were knocked down to me. As for the Wellington, as it gently touches down, it's the opposite of chocks away to make sure it stays here for good. Andy Bevan, Central Tonight. It is fascinating what people will collect, isn't but it? But definitely a man thing, isn't it? Oh, I guess it would be, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Just thinking if it was a woman, she'd have said all in the loft and then out. You wouldn't get that lot in the loft, though, would you? <laughs> I mean, It'd it's not exactly, not exactly beer mats, is it? But anyway, <laughs> good to see that it's got a sensible home. Yes. Right, that is it from us. We're back at the uh, usual time of six o'clock tomorrow, so do join the team, won't you, from us for the moment. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>